Hey guys, it's MJ, the Students Act Tree, and we're going to be doing a video on Facebook. And for those of you who don't know, Facebook has just turned 12 years of age, and they have hit the impressive milestone of getting 1 billion users in a single day. So, that's a long time of observing lots of people, which means Facebook has lots of data. I mean, it knows so much about us. And it also has data on how we, how we interact with each other, you know, the relationships we form with other people and, and all that type of stuff. And so I guess in this video, I'm going to show you how Facebook can predict who you're going to marry through the use of big data and pattern recognition when it comes to relationship behavior. Now, before they can do that, they are going to need to clean the data and, you know, just get a little bit uh, more organized. So, I mean, one of the first things they're going to have to do is account for some people who were already in a relationship before they started using Facebook. And when we don't know what the starting point is, it's called left censoring. And some people leave Facebook while they're in a relationship and then break up afterwards at a time unknown to Facebook. So when we don't know the end point, it's called right censoring. Now, we take all this data and we throw it into some impressive actuarial formulae and it's going to give us some amazing results. And the one thing it can do is that it can create a timeline like this for each person. You know, it can tell you when someone uh, will meet, when they will get into a relationship, when they'll get married, and when it will end. And Facebook can easily calculate, you know, how many relationships will be started this month, how many people will get engaged today, and how many will get divorced by the end of the year. And these calculations are very elementary. So what I want to ask, I want to ask, can Facebook get more personal than that? You know, can Facebook tell you who that special someone is going to be? And I believe the answer to be yes. I mean, when it comes to marriage, the options are endless. But Facebook knows who you most likely to marry and whom you'll have the greatest success rate with. And it might not necessarily be the same person. Like, as I've established, Facebook knows what you like, they know what your partner likes, you know, when it comes to music, art, movies, food, holiday destinations, I mean, it's quite scary. And at the moment, Facebook is using this data for advertising. You know, you get an advert based on what you like. And this has worked out very well. I mean, so much so that Facebook is worth close to $300 billion. I mean, that is a lot of zeros. So Facebook has all this information on us, and it also has all this information on how we interact with each other. You know, how many messages we send, what words we use, you know, what time of the day we're communicating. And this can be used with pattern recognition, which looks at vast amounts of data and spots common trends. I mean, in the past, pattern recognition has shown that people who search for baby names are more likely to be pregnant. Now, it's important not to make the fallacy that thinking that searching for baby names will make you pregnant. You don't have to worry. You can search baby names if you just want to, you know, find out uh, stuff like that. But Facebook can take all this data from past relationships. And remember, they have 1 billion users and 12 years of observations. You know, trends start appearing with quite a bit of clarity when you have this amount of quantity. I mean... Let's say you're in a relationship with someone. Facebook might look at, you know, the amount of photos you guys are tagged in with together, times you mention each other in statuses, when you post to their timelines, how many friends you have in common, the messages you send to each other. You know, Facebook will even read your messages. You know, are you saying I and you or are you saying we and us? You know, what are the types of likes you guys have in common? You know, when did you guys become Facebook friends? What's your age difference, the location, your language, your hometown, your occupation, what you each studied, how many comments you make, you know, even the time you log onto Facebook and the amount of times you look at other people's profiles. All this information with a whole bunch of other factors can be collected and it can answer the question, what is the probability that we will get married? 
and maybe a little bit more on a scary side, it can also calculate the probability that your relationship could end. I mean, it could estimate how long it will last. And it's gonna use various amounts of factors uh, to do this. And for an example, we're just gonna look at one key uh, indicator. But like I said, this is just an example. I don't have access to the data. Um, but this is just to illustrate the point. Let's say the data finds that people start a relationship, they're all happy, uh, time of length goes by, but then the one person starts looking at other people's profiles, you know, starts messaging them, and then the relationship ends soon after. Now the data can find this connection, you know, looking at people's profiles and then relationships ending. But can it explain it? Because this might just be a coincidence, you know, a coincidence that millions of relationships start ending when partners start stalking other profiles. Or it could be the cause. You know, maybe by looking at other people's profiles, this directly causes your relationship to end. Or there is a hidden factor. In this case, say one of the partner gets bored with the relationship, so she starts looking for someone else, finds someone more exciting, and leaves. You know, typical teenage behavior. It could be any one of these three things. Uh, but maybe something to back up with the, the hidden factor is other statistics, maybe showing that the frequency of keywords uh, used in messaging apps, you know, like love or XXX, start to diminish. Because remember, Facebook also owns WhatsApp, so they've also read all your messages. Well, I don't know if they've read all your messages, but they have the data on the word frequency and all that type of stuff. But what if you haven't even met your special someone? You know, what if you're still out there, you're still searching? I mean, can Facebook help out? I mean, let's say you're currently single, you may not even be Facebook friends with your future partner. You haven't even met them. But don't worry, Facebook knows where they are. I mean, as we stand, everybody is so interconnected with everybody else, and Facebook can use this to its advantage. I mean, Facebook could even intervene and directly help you out. And it could start off simply by suggesting that you, that you know each other, you know, that's causing you to become aware of that person's existence. And who knows, maybe one of you sends the other a friend request. This is when Facebook really starts to get to work. Facebook can alter the timeline algorithm so that their posts are moved to the top. You know, just like our sponsored content jumps to the top of your newsfeed, so it could be with a special person, thus keeping them in your mind. Facebook could also be a little bit more direct, you know, giving you some advice. I mean, it's seen millions of relationships. It knows the perfect pickup lines. It knows what is the best thing to do to increase your chances. Facebook could be the ultimate wingman. And it could continue after you're in the relationship to continue to give you advice and thus reduce the rate of divorce. I mean, already Facebook has the data on how the following will affect your relationship. You know, they've looked at millions and millions of relationships. They know what the impact having a baby has on it, what relocating or having a holiday or a new job or a promotion, or even the simple thing like reading a book, you know, clicking like to marriage advice or, or you know, the different types of love. You know, something as small as that could have an impact. So yeah, I guess at the end of the, the day, the question is, would you let Facebook get involved in your personal life like that? I mean, do you want the technology to encroach as much as this? And I mean, already some of you guys are using technology to help you out when it comes to love. So would you amp it up and give the big boy Facebook the right to use your data and you know, help you find the perfect partner? Or do you already feel a little bit too exposed to the internet and that your privacy is already too bare and open for everybody else? Let me know in the comment section below what you would do. Would you let Facebook be your wingman or would you rather close the door? But no matter what you do, make sure you subscribe for more actuarial videos. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out uh, the video I did on actuarial science and politics and actuarial science and the game of FIFA. But yeah, that's all we have time for today. Thanks so much for watching. And like I said, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Cheers.